In the previous uh, introduction of the injection molded ligite plate, it seems the application is perfect. Using Takuchi method, we can apply parameter design to improve the SN ratios, which can reduce the future uh, replication errors. However, there might be some difficulties in the real applications. And also, in this case, we are using random sampling, and we will show if there is any better methods to analyze the variations due to the noise factors. So in these sections, we'll talk about how to use gross product array design for the estimation of SN ratio. Is it the end of the story? Is every application of Takuchi method will be perfect? Not really. So as I mentioned, we are using random sampling. However, in random sampling, usually require a lot of samples in order to get a correct estimation of the mean and the standard deviation. Is there a better sampling strategy than random samples? Since the reason of the output distribution is due to the influence of noise factors. But during the sampling period, you cannot assure that all the noise factors will be ineffective in the current samples. So in the real applications, the mean and the standard deviation you estimated from the random samples may be different from the actual case because your sampling period didn't in in consider all the inference of the noise factors. Second, we are using parameter design using analysis of mean to get the effect plot. And using the effect plot, we assume all the factors are independent and to select the best level for each factor to maximize the SN ratio. However, what is the theoretical assumption for this kind of applications? How can we use this effect plot to derive the optimum parameter combination? And also, after you obtain the optimum parameters, how do you verify your result? Not just by experiment, but how do you verify that your parameter is the best in the full factorial? Certainly, you cannot do the full factorial experiment because you want to reduce the cost. But is there any method that we can examine our result and to make us more confident that our parameter design from this analysis of mean will be the best in the full factorial? And also, when you verify your design, what if the improvement of the optimum design is not the best when you compare with the current design? If it is not better than all the current design, certainly your derived design will not be the best in the full factorial. So first, we will start from the sampling strategy of a design treatment. The purpose of the sampling is to estimate the mean and the standard deviation of your current design of the parameter combinations from the uh, orthogonal array. So in order to get the uh, accurate estimation of the distributions, we should consider all the inference of the noise factors in order to get a fair estimation of SN ratio. As I mentioned, random sampling is an easy but not very feasible uh, sampling method since you usually will require a large sampling number to obtain a good estimations. But if you increase the sampling number, the cost will increase too. So Takuchi method uh, would like to propose another sampling strategy, which should be very symmetric, balanced, and uh, representative. Sounds familiar, right? Because we are using the similar concept in the orthogonal array for control factors. So he proposed use another orthogonal array to lay out the noise factors in order to simulate what is the possible worst combination of the noise factors when you put your product into applications. By using an orthogonal array, he can assure a small number of sampling. However, you can still get a very balanced and uh, symmetric sampling by consider all the inference of the noise factors. Here you need to include all the important noise factors, including the inner noise, outer noise, and manufacturing noise. 
Usually, we will use two levels for the noise factors because the influence of the noise factors will be mostly monotonic due to the small range. So we will prefer to use two levels for the noise factors. In order to differentiate the orthogonal array for the control factors, he used the inner array for the orthogonal array of control factors. Each combination or each treatment in the inner array will represent a possible design. For each possible design, they are under the influence of the noise factors when you put that into production and into applications. So we will consider all the important noise factors and factorize using two levels and assign them into another orthogonal array. We call it outer array. For each treatment in the outer array, we'll represent a sampling of the design under the influence of these noise factors. The factorial design of the noise factors basically will represent the possible extreme distribution when your product is put into production and application. So using this outer array, we can reduce the number of uh, uh, sampling and also we can get a good estimation of mean and standard deviation. This is how you arrange your design using this cross array design of experiment. This is the inner array where you put the control factors and each treatment stands for a possible design. When you want to estimate the performance of the each design, you will do samples. As I mentioned, we use another orthogonal array called outer array to assign the noise factors. In this case, the outer array is a select L8. And by the way, the inner array is L36 over here. So for each design, we need to simulate eight times. But this eight sampling is based on the inference of the noise factors. So for the first sampling, it's under the inference of these noise factors under this setting. So you will measure the output over here. Do the same thing for the rest of the seven samples. So from these eight samples, you can get the average output, standard deviation, and then the SN ratio for this first design in the inner array. Do the similar thing for the rest of the design. You can get the SN ratio for each design and then you can use this data to obtain the effect plot and response table. But bear in mind that the total number of experiments will be the multiplication of inner array and outer array. In this case, it will be 36 by 8, which is 288 in this case. So you will know that uh, you would like to prefer using the smallest inner array and the smallest outer array in order to reduce the total number of experiments. Since the cross product array design, the size will increase rapidly if you use a too big uh, orthogonal array for either inner or outer array. This is a preferred layout for the inner and outer array. Using a smaller example, uh, assume you are using L8 for the inner array, where you can assign seven control factors into this array. And for the outer array, we select L4 for three noise factors, X, Y, and Z. But here, comparing with the inner array, we make a transpose layout. Therefore, for each design in the inner array, we can have, in this case, four sample. One, two, three, four sample. And for first sample, it will be under the influence of this parameter setting of noise factors. These settings of noise factors, which will be level 1, 1, 1. And using this uh, noise factor setting, you can get the response Y1. Similarly, you can do the samples for Y2 and Y4 under the corresponding inference for the noise factors listed in the outer array. So from this four sample, you can calculate the mean, standard deviation, and the SN ratio. 
using this layout, you can understand for each sample is under what kind of design and under what kind of inference of noise factors. So in this case, the total number of samples will be 8 multiplied by 4, which is 32. Once you get the uh, effect plot for the control factors, basically you will have two types of control factors. The first type of control factors will have inference on the SN ratio. And the second type of control factors, they will have no or insignificant inference on the SN ratio. So we can classify the control factors into four types based on their inference on the mean output and the SN ratio. The first type of control factors has good inference on output mean and also output SN ratio. And the second type has no inference on output mean but good inference on SN ratio. For those has no inference on SN ratio, which can be classified into type 3 and type 4 based on their inference on the mean output. So we can have a better strategy for the parameter design. In this a smaller the better case. From the information of the control factors, we would like to select a label setting where we can optimize our response and our conformance, but also minimize the cost. For the smaller the better case, we assume there will be no interaction. So for type 1 and type 2 factors, since they have inference on the SN ratio, so we can simply select the level where your SN can be maximized. However, for type 3 and type 4, since they have no inference on the SN ratio, so we would like to select the settings based on the cost information. However, if you don't have any cost information for the factor levels, then you can still select the level with a larger SN, although the improvement will be insignificant if you have the cost information. For type 3, since the selection of the level of type 3 factors will not inference SN, however, they will still have inference on mean output. So you can balance the cost and the performance of type 3 factors. But for type 4, since they have no inference on both mean and SN ratio, so you have better select the level where it is most economic in order to reduce the overall production cost.